Hello there, Science Kids! Welcome sa ating new episode ng Grade 4 Science Learning Activities. Kayo ay patuloy sa inyong pag-aaral sa inyong mga tahanan, kaya naman ako ay narito upang kayo ay gabayan sa inyong pagkatuto. My name is Teacher Lariza at narito na ang ating new episode para sa Grade 4 Science Activities. In our last science episode, you were able to describe what happens to solid materials when mixed with liquid materials. You also learned about mixtures. Mixtures are combinations of two or more materials and that we have two kinds of mixture, the homogeneous mixture and the heterogeneous mixture. In that lesson, you also learned about solution, colloids, and suspensions. Again, when we say solution, it is a homogeneous mixture in which solid materials completely dissolve in liquid materials. Solid materials are called solute while the liquid material is called solvent. However, colloid is a homogeneous mixture wherein substances stay within other substance and do not separate in layers. Colloids also exhibit Tyndall effect. Lastly, suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in which materials that have been mixed together separates over time. Solid materials either settle at the bottom or float on top of the water. For a quick review, can you identify which among these three mixtures is an example of solution, colloid, or suspension? Comment down your answer below this video. You probably have spent some time with your relatives and friends in beach, park, or school before the pandemic. These places where you go or the area that we are living in is what we call the environment or in Tagalog, kapaligiran. We can see different things in these different places. These things can be classified into living or non-living thing. When we say living things, these are organisms which have life on its own. Some examples include plants, animals, and of course, us humans. Or in Tagalog, pag sinabi nating living thing, ito ay mga nilang na may buhay. On the other hand, Non-living things are things without life of its own. Some examples include sand, water, or stone. Non-living things and living things interact with one another in a place that we call environment. When we say interaction, it is the doings between individual or groups or mutual action or influence. Or in Tagalog, kapag sinabi nating interaksyon, ito yung mga gawain sa pagitan ng mga individual o grupo o di kaya na may tugo ng aksyon o impluensya ng mga bagay sa isa't isa. As an example, we humans do certain activities that involve non-living things around us. One example could be planting plants. Ang mga plantitas at plantitos natin ay nagtatanim ng mga halaman which is a living thing, sa mga paso, which is a non-living thing. We do this maybe in our garden or around our house, which is the environment that we are in. These interactions between living things and non-living things could lead to changes in the materials that are found in our home or in our environment. Today, we will talk about the changes in the materials, whether they are useful or harmful, to one's environment. Science Learning Episode Changes in the Materials that are Useful or Harmful to One's Environment Now, let us first unlock the two important terms that we need in understanding this lesson. Number one is useful. When we say useful, it means the capability of being put to use or in Tagalog, ito yung pagkakaroon ng pakinabang o gamit o kakayahang magamit. Number two is harmful. When we say harmful, it means of a kind that is likely to be damaging. Or in Tagalog, ito ay isang bagay na maaaring makasira o makapanira. Here are the guide questions that we need to answer at the end of this activity. Number one, what are the changes in the materials that are useful to our environment? What made this changes useful to our environment? Number two, what are the changes in the materials that are harmful to our environment? What made these changes harmful to the environment? 
Now, let us identify which of the following changes in materials can be classified into useful or harmful. 1. Planting of vegetables. 2. Burning of waste. 3. Cutting of trees. And number 4. Plants bearing fruits. Now, let us proceed to answering the guide questions of our activity. Number 1. What are the changes in materials that are useful to the environment? What made them useful to the environment? The answer is, the changes that are useful to our environment include planting of vegetables and plants bearing fruits. These changes are useful because it keeps the environment beautiful and provides food to living things. Number 2. What are the changes in materials that are harmful to the environment? What made them harmful to the environment? The answer is, the changes that are harmful to our environment include burning of waste and cutting of trees. These changes are harmful because it damages the environment and destroys our natural resources. Here is the key point of our episode for today. Some changes in the materials can be useful to our environment, while others are harmful. Do you want to learn more of the different harmful effects of these changes in our environment? Ano pang hinihintay mo? Click the link below this video and let us learn more about the harmful effects of these changes in the materials to our environment. That's it, Science Kids! I hope you learned something new in our science episode for today. If you like this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe sa ating channel to stay notified sa ating mga upcoming videos. See you again!